Mr. Pelosi may call your next witness. I call Leticia Mares as a witness. All right, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir, I do. All right, thank you. Please state and spell your name for the record. My name is Leticia Mares, L E T I C I A. Last name? M A R E S. Thank you. And do you have any documents in front of you today? No, sir, I do not. All right, where are you testifying from? Yakima, Washington. Sure, are you at your home or some other location? I am at my home. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, Mr. Blaise, your witness. Okay. Leticia, I do have a few questions here for you. The first one being, are you a DSHS certified interpreter here in Washington State? Yes, I am. I am a DSHS social and medical certified interpreter in Washington State for approximately 20 years. Thank you. Do you used to have enough appointments? And I would say, I would clarify that, sorry. Do you used to have enough LNI appointments to support yourself and your family before the implementation of the online interpreting work scheduling system? Yes, <clears throat> yes. Before the online scheduling system, I had enough appointments to support myself, my family, and to pay my bills and have a little bit of savings. Thank you. Next question is, how often were you getting paid by LNI? I was getting paid every two weeks by the Department of Labor and Industries. Uh, next question is, were your payments delayed significantly on a frequent basis? No, they were not delayed on a significantly basis. Okay. Uh, next question is, how do you use to get appointments before the implementation of the scheduling system? Um, before the implement implementation of the scheduling system, I would get appointments uh, when providers called me and through other language access providers. I would get appointments through uh, businesses in the community, such as attorneys. Okay. Um, on average, how many working hours do you used to have from LNI appointments weekly? On average, I would have between 30 to 40 hours. Okay. Next question is, are you signed up with Interpreting Works in order to receive appointments from the online scheduling system? Yes, sir. Yes, I am signed up with Interpreting Works to receive appointments through the scheduling system. Thanks. Next question. What was the average amount of working hours that you were able to secure on a weekly basis from the appointments that you received and completed through the scheduling system since you signed up? Between three to five appointments. Okay, next question. For how long were you getting these few appointments worth three to five hours a week on average? Approximately like a month and a half. And a half. Next so question. I just, uh, I'm sorry, I have an objection. I'm sorry, it takes me a little bit to get out of the unmute, but. I'm going to object to the form of the question because I think it misstated the witness's testimony. Mr. Blues, do you want to rephrase the question? I do not understand the objection. Well, the witness testified that since the new scheduling system, she's had three to five appointments per week. Council rephrased her testimony to three to five hours a week. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to rephrase the question, Mr. Blues? I think, you know, it, so the way that Ellen and I appointments work, they get paid by debated, but, um, you know, they, every, every worker, interpreter or not, um, a common person used, uses uh, their weekly hours to determine if something is worth continuing to work with. So I'm asking how many hours are resulting from these appointments because that's indicative of how these conditions were affected. And that's fine. You just ask her how many hours she works now. I mean, I, I think Mr. Yevlov's objection was that Mr. Frank was, you're conflating the number of appointments with the number of hours. And so just be clear when you're, what you're asking. Okay. So you like, Mr. Bliss, please, please rephrase the question. Okay. So what was the uh, average amount of working hours that you were able to secure uh, on a weekly basis? Mm, three to four hours on a weekly basis. And that was since uh, you signed up with Interpreting Works, right? That is correct. Thank you. Now, the next question is, for how long were you getting these uh, these hours on a weekly basis, these average of hours? For a month and a half. 
approximately like for a month and a half. Okay. Okay. Um, next question. This question is: Did you get uh, did you get paid on time for the hours that you work that you completed? No, sir, I did not. Okay. How long have you had unpaid invoices? To this date, they owe me appointments from April, May, June, July, August, and September. To this date. Okay. How did that impact you financially? Oh my God, it's been a burden. It's affected me so much. Imagine, I have a family. I have kids in college. I used to have a savings. I was able to, able to pay my bills. Now, I have no savings. I don't know when I'm going to get paid. I mean, like, do I want to continue? This is my livelihood, but they don't care. I do the work. I expect to get paid. It's been seven months. Seven months. This is not right. I haven't been paid for some jobs that I've done. April, May, June, July, August, September. Maybe that's six months. Maybe I did it wrong. Okay. Um, do you want to establish a correct amount of months or? April, May, June, July, August, September. Okay. So six months. I've never worked for anyone that hasn't paid me for jobs that I have done in six months until now. Thanks. Um, so the last question that I have for you is what other issues have you experienced with interpreting works that you did not have to deal with before the implementation of their online scheduling system? Um, I was getting before the implementation or after the implementation, the issues that I have experienced is that I live in Yakima. I have a 13 mile radius to get appointments. I get appointments in Seattle. I get appointments in Wenatchee. I get appointments in OMAC. I don't even know where OMAC is. But yet, I can't get appointments in Yakima. I can only get two to three appointments when before I used to have many appointments. Where are they at? Uh, another uh, problem we have, or I have, is that it's a three hour difference where interpreting works is. So if you call them by two o'clock, they don't answer the phone. Who do you call to ask for help? And when you do call, they don't help you because they don't know what to do. They don't know the LNI system. So I'm still left like with no help. Another problem that I've had with um, interpreting works is that my name was on a sheet, a worksheet. And it said, do not send Leticia Mares on the comments. And this was sent out to all the interpreters, to all of them. Do you know how much that affected me? I've been an interpreter for 27 years in Yakima, and I've provided interpreting services throughout the entire community, but yet interpreting uh, provider put my name on the sheet for all the um, interpreters to see with my name, do not send me, because they I told them about the new system and how we had to do slight translation and they didn't like it. Now, let me tell you, I did not provide this service because the patient did not show up. But yet, my name was on there. I called Interpreting Works. I emailed Interpreting Works. I talked to Mrs. Marissa Gillio, the owner of Interpreting Works, and I asked her, can you please remove my name? Everybody's calling me. They're asking me, what did you do wrong? Why is your name on there? Why don't they want you? Do you know what she told me? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't do that. I'm, I don't know how to do that. But this is her system. This is her software. How can she not remove my name? Right? So then also there was another incident where I did site translation at another clinic. And um, I called again. I'm like, my name is on this sheet. You know, they, they didn't want the site translation. So I said, my name is on a sheet. It says, do not send Leticia Maris. And also there were three other interpreters name on there, two other interpreters names on there. And yet they were not able to help me. I felt devastated. I felt like I was dragged through the mud. My name, my reputation, I felt tarnished. I felt insignificant. I called her. I emailed her. I called labor and industries crying. I left a message to them. Um, I talked to them, but yet nobody could help me. Do you know how humiliated I felt? having my name put on there, and then the company that I work for not being able to help me or to take my name off of there. You know, I felt like 
I was a criminal. Like if I had done something when I never even did anything, you know, I just go to work, I help the LEP and that is all. But yet I felt demoralized by this company that couldn't help me. If I can't go to the people that I work for, for help, who do I go to? Who, who's going to help me? You know? Sorry. This, this is just very hard for me to really not live this all over again. You know, I never had to deal with this before when I was with the with labor and industries. Um, sorry. Um, so sorry. Leticia, I'm sorry to hear all of that. Um, do you need a break? Is this appropriate for this, Mr. Schneider, or? No, no, Juan, you know, they need to know. They need to know. Okay, take your time. Off the record. Ma'am, you can take a couple minutes, it's not a problem. One moment. Yeah, just let me know whenever you're, uh, you're ready. The records. Mr. Bliss, do you have any further questions for the witness? Yes. Um, I, I want to thank you for sharing your uh, testimony. I do have a question relating to your name on wor uh, worksheets. Um, we understand that uh, you get appointments, interpreters get appointments uh, online. So was it a worksheet or something that was sent to interpreters online? What work order, worksheet, what was it? It's uh, a, you get a text message and um, whenever you're an appointment, you get a text message for a job. So, you know, you look while you're interpreting, if you want to get the, secure the job, you have to look at your text message because it's gone within a minute and uh, like half a second. So, you know, I would try getting them and it, I would see on there. At first I didn't see it until another interpreter brought it to my attention. But I had to go back and it kept saying on the comments, do not send Leticia Mares, do not send Leticia Mares. I called them and I asked them, is there an official complaint? She said, no. Uh, yeah, I, excuse me, I'd like to object that the witness has gone well beyond the question. I'm responsible at this point. I think I'll give the witness some leeway. The objections are ruled. And so you get your appointments through the text messages and while you're interpreting, you have to do it because then if, if you don't get that accept, then you have no work. And I kept seeing it and I'm like, well, if they don't want me, why am I still getting requests for these clinics that want my services? And you know, I called Interpreting Works and I told him to please remove my name, please, several times. And they said they weren't able to do that, that I had to call Labor Industries, this is their software, but yet they weren't able to help me. Okay, so, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, so then, you know, Victoria said, well, you know, we can't go in there and manually remove your name from every single appointment. Okay, Leticia, I, I, I have to get this clear because you said it's online, uh, you, you got these appointments, you saw your name there that said no Leticia Mares and all interpreters or many interpreters in your area were able to see that. Is that correct? Okay. That is correct. And then um, they also sent me an email. They're like, oh, don't worry. It's only the interpreter. I'm sorry. I'm going to... Okay. The question is... Hold on. Ms. Mares, hold on a second. Mr. Yanlov? Sorry. I'm going to object. The question was a simple yes or no question. Was, it, was what he said correct? The witness's answer is non-responsive. I mean, the objection's overruled. I think she's elaborating on the answer or on the oh. question that's asked. So, Ms. Morris, if you have, you feel like you've answered Mr. Bliss's question? Yes, I get him through text messages and I get him through emails and all the interpreters are able to see. But you know what? I just want you to know that they told me that all the interpreters can see him, but I, I'm assured that no provider can see him. Do you think that makes me feel better? Because a provider can't see it, but yet all my colleagues can see it? No, it doesn't. That's invasion of privacy. That should be something confidential, don't you think? Okay. Um, is there anything else, Leticia? And once again, thank you for uh, doing this, thinking, taking the time to um, offer your testimony. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add as to how your working conditions have been changed? 
Yes, I don't have enough work. I'm not getting paid on time. We do not have a set pay period. I could get paid tomorrow. I could get paid in two weeks. I could get paid in six months. Um, also, now they're telling me that if I am scheduled for an appointment and the provider is running behind, that I have to leave before I'm completing, before I have completed my services and I will not get paid for my time there and that I need to go to my next appointment. But yet on the LNI website, it does not say that. It says that I have to complete the services to get paid. So am I gonna be working for free if a provider runs behind? I mean, this is stuff that should have been worked out. This is affecting me. This is affecting the provider. This is affecting the LEP. Okay. I mean, we should. We are here to help the community. This is our job. We are their voice. And we can't do our job correctly with the scheduling system where I have to be interrupted while I'm interpreting so I can secure a job, so I can have a livelihood. And yet I have to leave an appointment to go somewhere else and I get paid for that one and maybe show, and maybe the other one won't even show up. Okay. Um, thank you, Leticia, for your testimony. No more questions. Did you unload? No questions, thank you. All right, if there's nothing further, you're excused, ma'am.